What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the EAFC career mode, it's episode number 21, returning today on the back of the big sale, Max Kilman gone to Spurs for a club record fee of £30 million and now we're over 50, oh, that's the calendar, and now we're over £50 million in the transfer budget. Today, we're rebuilding Luton Town. So, obviously, we do need a new centre-half to replace him. Um, that's probably my first order of business. To be fair, whilst I will be looking for someone with a bit more first-team quality, um, Malik, to me, remains the guy I really want. Still at Sheffield United, relegated from last season. Just 23 years old, already 80 rated. Definitely my top target. But I found this guy from my scouting, uh, Leandro Mendes. 18-year-old Portuguese centre-half, possibly the Pepe regen, out of FC Utrecht, only 18 and 75 rated. I mean, we got the cash, right? So straight away, I'm bringing this guy in. I think we should be able to get him for just over market valuation, and this guy must have some sort of potential. So, I, <laughs> like, we, we literally picked this guy up, what, a week ago? Why would we include him in the swap deal? To be fair, Utrecht, if you do want a forward, you can have Ogbeno in the final year of his contract. Decent squad player to have, but so if we go 7.5 mil plus Chiodozi, and they say no, they don't want him, but they'll take 10.6 mil plus a 15 cents on. Of course, I, I still think we should be able to get him a little cheaper than that. Maybe 10.5 mil, but no sell on clause. See what they say to that, and they're going to think about it. So, Pavlovsky, uh, wanted by Young Boys on loan, just delegated that one. And also, I forgot about this. Right as I was ending the last episode, just before I quit the game, I saw that Muric was wanted by Fiorentina. I did say he won the Golden Glove last year. He'll be in demand, but I'm going to reject that first offer. I think there'll be bigger clubs to come as the weeks go by. So... Hopefully Utrecht will go back to us here, and they do, and they say no, they want 12, but to be fair, I don't mind meeting that. I still think I can get them a little bit cheaper, but 18 years old, 75 rate. This guy's got to have potential. 11 million for Mendes. Yep, they will take it. I think he might be the Pepe region, you know? I'm not totally sure, but he must have some sort of potential. 10 grand a week, five-year deal, and for 11 million, Leandro Mendes is in. It's showing great potential, so it's not exciting prospect, but it's still decent. And for an 18-year-old coming in on cheap wages, five-year contract, yep, I will definitely take that. He's still going to grow. He's still going to get really, really solid. Would like to get his passing stats up, to be fair, as they are quite low. But um, yeah, even so, we'll, uh, we'll take that to start off with. And he's definitely not the long-term successor for Kilman. Absolutely no way, but... It's a, it's a good bench player to have there. It's going to grow nicely and uh, play in the occasional game on the uh, on the midweek. So, yeah, I, I still think for this season, now that Kilman's gone, we will need a long-term successor for him. And again, I did mention that the one I really want is Malik. Like, you remember last season with, with Wolves and we said, no, we won't get Cunha because we've only just survived in our first year. Last season, we survived by a long distance, you know, finishing in mid-table. And Malik is still in the championship. And for a centre half of his quality, just 23, wanted to get into the German national team as well. He's got far more chance of doing it here than he does in the Premier League. I I think I'm going to do it, you know. I mean, there's a lot of names here I could go in for, but to me, I think he fits the bill perfectly. There's no way he'd stay in the championship. Surely not. His international career on the line. I, I I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go for Malik. He's the one I want. So he's the one I'm going for. Yeah, it's a bit different than last season. You remember at the start of last season, we were, you know, not not too sure we could convince too many players to come to us. We're, we're on a great upward trajectory right now, you know. We are turning into a mini Brighton. So, yeah, to me, I don't see why this deal wouldn't make sense. The Blades, though, wanted to hold me to ransom. It's ridiculous. Come on, man. Like, seriously, he's not going to want to stay in the second tier. I hope EA look into this as years go by because, okay, that's a little bit more realistic. Like, a club shouldn't hold you to ransom for one of their players who would be desperate to leave after relegation. So, 27 mil, 2.5 mil over market valuation. And once again, the club's going to think about it. Actually, I just see there the bid has been accepted. So, there we go. So, uh, Pavlovsky is going to join Young Boys. This is a loan to buy deal. Totally okay with that because he's lost his potential tag. That's the problem. So, so that some people don't realize that when you have so many uh, youth players or young players, yeah, that's fine, with uh, potential, um, 
basically EA to level it out a little bit so you're not effectively just hoarding all the best wonder kids is they'll start to gradually decrease potential of certain players so it makes total sense uh, as for Rodri wanted by Preston totally fine with that there he's also lost his potential tag too and of course he's no Gabriel Long but uh, yeah for, for Malik right now 27 million that to me makes a lot of sense there you know the Blades relegated last season no way would he stay in the second tier with his national team career on the line. Whereas here, a replacement for Kilman, always going to be starting. Makes sense for everyone. 40 grand a week. Salary, it's a lot. It is a lot, but to be fair, I would definitely say he justifies it. I guess he had a, a struggling stint at AC Milan after moving on from Schalke. Going to the Blades, relegated there at Bramwell Lane. A chance for him to resurrect his career here at Kenilworth Road. Malik in for a new club record fee. Yep, massive fee, 27 million pounds, 40 grand a week deal, but Malik is our new man in. I'll be honest, I was tempted to go after Mark Gahey again, but I've seen quite a lot of comments from you guys saying, I appreciate the fact that Docs now isn't signing all the players he used to. So who's ready for Scott McTominay and Ivan Tony to appear today? But uh, no, I, I, I get that, man. Like, I really do. And, this, and in this save, I am trying really hard to go after players that I don't normally go after. And, and granted, because I've done so many saves and played for so many years, there is going to be a crossover every now and then. But I am trying to go after players that I ordinarily wouldn't go after and leave the ones that I normally always do uh, at, uh, at other clubs instead. But uh, yeah, Malik is in buzzing with that. And again, he's, he's still going to grow really nicely, man. He'll get up to 81 really quickly. We might get into 83 this year. And at 23 years old, this is the success of a Kilman we were looking for. And Swansea want to bring in Rodri, just like Preston as well. I like that of him being Welsh. So we'll accept that bid there too. As we advance through to the first of the month, where we'll get our first batch of youth scouting for this season. And I'm excited, man. Ghana, Ecuador, and England. Let's see what we got. Starting off with England. Obviously, this is my scout already. Right off the bat, Dylan Savage coming out swinging, man. 56, 74 potential, uh, overall, 74, 94 potential already. And even Joshua Lennon could be quite good as well. It's a very good start there from England. As for Ghana, uh, not sure anyone's going to make the cut just yet. Although Amos could be pretty solid. Put him in the academy. And I'll continue scouting the others. And as for Ecuador as well. I don't think I've ever scouted Ecuador, you know. If I have, I can't remember it. But uh, to start off with, Adam Soria could be okay. Uh, Marco Franco is a great name, but uh, not going to make it. And uh, yeah, not, not great from Ecuador to begin with, but at least we've got one Ghanaian and one, uh, one Englishman making the academy as well. So for our new season, yeah, okay, we're looking like this. Oh, look down there. Bart, the Bart man. 90 to 94 potential. Look at Mini Lewandowski in the, uh, the academy right now. Looking pretty solid there, and uh, a few others too looking really good as well, including Johan Hansen, a, uh, a young CAM as well, Jack Love, 83, 89 potential centre off. Our academy is looking solid. Yep, first game of the season, Etihad Man City away, certainly not an easy one to start a new campaign off with, and you know me, man, I'll take a point in these sort of games, this one included on the opening day, let's see if we can get up. Got first team squad numbers now for uh, Cox and, uh, and Long as well, Long's wearing number seven. Cox is wearing number eight. It just feels right. It just feels right. Long and Cox next to each other in the uh, in the supporting trio for this one here. As Man City start off looking bright. Ballo with interception and clears though. And a chance for a breakaway, you know. Cox has due to the left-hand side. And it'll drop to Adebayo. And he's found Gabriel Long. He's onside. Oh, what a start that would have been. Cox looking to get away and does. And he's got Di Lorenzo to beat. And he does. And now Duke. Oh, I just couldn't find out a bio, man. Decent first half. Defense has been really, really solid. Malik on his debut. Looking like Max on his debut right now. Arden ain't got an answer. Oh, why did I say that? Why did I say that? I've just woken the beast up. You know what's going to happen right before the break, right before half time. Oh, what a save, Murich. Yeah, this will be a solid result in the first game, man. Solid result. We can hold on to this. Is that a bio? I spaced out a dig. Oh! Elijah! New contract. Worth every single penny. What a screamer. 
Since this save has begun, I'll be honest, we've not scored that many absolute thunderbolts. That might be the best of the lot, though. Absolute scorcher from 23 odd yards. 40 grand a week. No, 45 grand a week I had to pay. Club ties doing it by far now. Wearing the armband. Worth every single penny. You get what you pay for. This is why, like, I know I'm getting a bit off topic here, but this is why I always get confused by, like, owners of companies and businesses that get annoyed at their, you know, low-earning staff. It's like, pay them a decent salary and you'll get more out of them. Do you know, I don't understand that. You don't boost worker morale and productivity with pizza pies. You know, you, you do it with a decent salary. If if the if the worker gets paid a decent rate, I guarantee you, they'll uh, they'll give you a decent job. They'll give you a decent service. You're paying them peanuts. What do you expect? Oh, no, 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 right. In stoppage time. No. Ah. Oh! And of all their attacking quality, the one that comes up clutch, Tommy Doyle. <laughs> Who would have seen that? Yeah, basically the final kick of the game. That is so frustrating, man. Decent young player, don't get me wrong, but I was thinking, stay tight to Harlan, stay tight to Foden, don't give him any bit of space, and, and Tommy Doyle says, guys, I'll do this. I, I, I'll, I'll rescue us, don't worry. Don't worry, I'll do it. Sir Tommy Doyle. <laughs> it's like when Steve Kerr tells the story in the uh, championship parade when he goes, well, I guess i got to bail Michael out again. Tommy Doyle got to bail Harlan out again. So it looks like Ducore is uh, is off. Uh, Severe and Brentford both meeting a, a decent fee there for Czech. Uh, Cunha maybe off to Frankfurt. And uh, oh, that's interesting. Chong, Palace paying the 5 mil release clause. Right. Now, we actually mentioned this at the end of last season and said that despite his low release clause, no one had come in for him. The question is do we decide to keep him and offer him a new contract? Or just let him walk to Palace. Personally, it's under market valuation, but I I might just let him go. Palace now in the championship too. I'm I'm okay with that. Yeah, I like Chong, but we never really got on with him, did we? Let's be honest. He just he just never really clicked with me. And uh, he does say thanks for seeing me. Sorry to be having to tell you this, but I don't see my future here. He's not happy at the club. So fair enough, fair enough, Chong. Take take some time over the decision, but I think I think that's on going to Selhurst Park. You know, I'll, I'll take the five mil. I just I just never really got on with him. I wanted to. I did. I played him through the spine. I played him further forward. I played him out on the wing for a brief period of time. I played him up top in a two-man strike duo, but I just never clicked with Jong. Off to Selhurst Park. We'll take the five mil. And uh, yeah, I'm okay with that. So now up to 20 million. Just turned down a bit for Reed Val because he's only been here a year. I do like him. Following game is Arsenal at home. I think I'm going to play this and assess what we're lacking right now. Because to be fair, I I don't think we need to strengthen. I'm liking how the team is looking. You know, one thing I don't want to do is just spend for the sake of spending. Like, if there's a good value for money deal available, we'll do it. But yes, we're becoming an established Premier League side, but we don't want to spend money just for the sake of spending money. You know, we want those good value for money deals and not putting players on high contracts for the sake of it. But if we don't win any of our first two or three games, it's, oh, Connor's got to do better there. Gabriel Martinelli heads over the far post. Not tight enough and missed time in this jump as well. Yeah, I, I am thinking, I like Connor and I love the long throw, but I am thinking if we were to sign someone, it would be a replacement for, uh, for our number two. To me, I think, oh, that's got to be at least a looking. Oh, it's a straight red. Oh, well, I have to say, it was a terrible tackle. But based on the position of the pitch, I wasn't sure that was going to be a straight red. To be fair, you look at that again. My goodness. Dude just flew in for no reason at all. Honestly. That was a shocking tackle. I'm surprised Gabriel's still standing. There we go, Connor. Over the top, Gabriel to chase. Picked himself up, dusted himself off. And oh, man. Shaped up to shoot the left foot, but I went near post. That's the problem with precision finishing. Like, you gotta, you can get it on the right foot, but you've got to make sure you get the angle right. Otherwise, it's going to go straight to the goalkeeper nine times out of ten. Straight down the throat of the Icelandic shot stop like that. That either side of him, that's 1-0, but that's precision finishing in a nutshell. You get very little help. You've got to get the accuracy spot on. Golden chance burn there. Chance is still alive, though. Cox puts it wide. Plays it back wisely. Still tied at 0-0. Nil -nil. 
Wait a minute, there should be a free orange shirt. If I just slow the pace down, we should be able to find one when we work our way forward. Like right now, there's gotta be a there's gotta be a man free. Is that a bio? Oh has his shot deflected. 32 minutes to go. Pl plenty of time. But just gotta take the chance. And right on cue, two in two. Justifying that big pay increase. Pay your boys what they're worth and you'll get the best out of them. That's that's the advice I give to any business owner. Yes, Malik went in, mate. And out wide is Duke. And with the pace this guy's got, he's going to take Masrawi for a spin down that left. Steps in. Adebayo. Great save. But we, we're pushing for a winner. A draw's not a bad result at all. We're pushing for a winner as the header goes off target. Oh, I'll be fuming if we lose this, honestly. Played really well out there. But I reckon it might happen, you know. Oh, it's that step inside from the flank. Where is Murich going? What? Why is it? What have I just seen? Okay, look, that is just ridiculous. I mean, that is just... Where is he going? Why has he just dived well out of the way before Odegaard's even taken the shot? Are you kidding me? I mean, that reaction is exactly how I'm feeling right now behind the mic. Why has he just dived out of the way? He hasn't even shot yet. That's typical FIFA, that is, man, isn't it? Like, opposition goalkeeper, prime Manuel Neuer. Yours dives out of the way almost intentionally. Are you having a laugh? That is ridiculous, man. Like, okay, close proximity, maybe having a bit of guesswork, but he's not even taken the shot yet. He's barely even lifted his leg up. That is... So frustrating. And that's going to do it. That is, that is, I'm, I'm annoyed at that. I don't know how I've just lost that game, man. That should have been a free point. It's not got none. That's terrible. All right. Granted, defense is weak. I'll take the blame for allowing that cut in from the side. But like that is just so poor, man, honestly. That's typical FIFA, man. When your goalkeeper dives out of the way of the ball. So, yeah, I think I think if we do look now with the 20 mil in the budget and say, okay, three goals conceded in our first two games, maybe a new right back required. The, the four on the shortlist, I'd say Kabore now, well out of our price range, might as well forget about it. But all three of these guys in the championship, to, to me, Nico Williams makes the most sense. Now in his second year, full Welsh international, and out of contract come the end of the season as well. I, I think this makes the most sense to me here. And obviously, Robert Senior, Welsh International. Yeah, I, I like that a lot. Let's go for Nico. So they're after a little bit more than I was expecting, to be fair. Considering the fact he's out of contract come the end of the season. So, with that being the case, I feel like we can continue to low ball here. Like, we might as well, because, like, what's the alternative when they let him go on a free transfer? Come on, guys. Seriously? Well, this would still be under market valuation, 15 and a quarter. And they'll say, yeah... 15.25, still still under market valuation by a few mil. I'll take that. Yep, we'll have that. Five years, 35 grand a week. You know, I've never actually signed Williams before. I've used him in a Forest CM, but I've never actually signed him before. So first time actually bringing him to a club. And to be fair, love the guy's stats, man. You know, absolutely rapid. The stamina and the strength does need to be improved, especially with the way that we play. But technically, really solid going forward of 81 crossing, 76 ball control, and 79 dribbling as well. So to me, getting on that defensive wing back development plan, that, that strength of 58, not good enough, I would say, in uh, in this team. That, that to me is the only concern, but otherwise, this guy's going to hit 80 very quickly. So budget now down to three and a half mil. That'll probably do it for transfers in the summer. We might make one or two more sales before deadline day to give us a bit more cash to work with. So yeah, third to four games, Palace, Selhurst Park, Carabao Cup. Not too fast do we go out, but would like to avoid the cup set and get our first win this season if possible. I, I, I would say at the moment, the team is on the cusp of being for an R star, which is exactly what we want it to be at the end of the summer window. We might not be just there yet, but we are very close to it. So good progress in this summer window, rebuilding after losing Kilman. And I want that first win, hopefully in this one too. What a ball of Bene, he's onside there. Surely, 
Yes! Perfect start. What a pull through to Ogbeno. Well, was that Ogbeno or Loder? They got the, I think it was actually Loder. They got the uh, assist on his uh, on his debut. So we'll certainly take that. And as Panzu wins it back, a chance to break here. God, I'm so happy I picked, I picked O'Hare up. He, he's, he's brilliant, mate. He's so quick, bags of energy, and got an end product too. And that high defensive work rate, he's my sort of player, man. Yeah, I love that. Load up. O'Hare. Panzu filling in at left back. This guy just plays anywhere for me. I love the versatility. In the middle, Barkley. Oh, what a save. Still waiting for that first goal since the return from injury, man. Love the boss. Only one year left on his deal. I think this season... He'll be getting less minutes, but we still love him. Great presence in the dressing room, if nothing else, man. Love Barkley. Oh, Panzu, got to get there, got to get there, got to get there. No, 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 no. Oh, man, that dude just left Pelly in the dust, man. <laughs> that is when you know you're getting on, man. When those youngsters just blitz Bosh. He was never catching up. Do you remember when I said that pace this year had kind of been, you know decreased in terms of effectivity well there are exceptions <laughs> that is just ridiculous man i was like straining holding out that right trick i was getting no oh is that red goodness yes what in aaron danny barkley go on ross go on ross go on ross barkley oh <laughs> He's back! The boss is back in the office, look busy! Ross Barkley! First since the injury and a game winner! I say that, there is still a bit of time. Oh no, 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 no! Oh for God's sake, man! Pens it is, put your money on Palace, no way I'm making it through this. I can't take Pens, man, I ain't got the confidence. I ain't got the self- What are those boys sitting on? <laughs> Listen, don't get me wrong, I'm liking the AFC 24, man, but there's a... <laughs> don't ask me what's going on with those two guys now. But, um... I, I, am, I am liking this year's game, don't get me wrong, but there's, there's a lot of bugs in it. There's a lot of bugs, there's a lot of glitches, and I still can't choose my penalty takers. There's a lot about this game I like, there's a lot that I don't. Ainsley going top right here against Henderson. Sends in the wrong way. Zuni scored there first. Oh, Galini, Two and two. Danny going same corner. Bang. I think they're going to change it up, you know. No, sent in the wrong way first time. But still, if I stay, stay 100%, then uh, this is mine. I'm going to change it up this time with the boss here. Scored in normal time. What I thought would be the winner. Denied. Where are you going, Pedraza? Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> Looks cool when it comes off. You look like an absolute prat when it doesn't, mate. That's the, the Penenka curse, man. Penenka curse. Oh, here to win it. Yes! First shootout victory of EAFC 24, man. Slightly meaningless, but we'll take it. Man, got away with that one. Absolutely got away with that one. And the following draw puts us against Blackpool in the third round. So hopefully... We'll be going through to the last 16 for the first time in the save. A nice cut run in season three will be a, uh, a good first for us. To be fair, a last 16 of both the FA Cup in the past two years. Not bad either, to be fair. Anyway, um, yeah, the uh, following game, final one, Aston Villa. And before this, we'll have dead, uh, after this, we'll have deadline day. So, might possibly make a move on deadline day. Maybe a sale, maybe a signing, but we'll see how we're looking after this. We always beat Aston Villa. So far, four from four. Let's do it again. Yeah, it's pretty crazy to think that last year they finished in the top four and yet we beat them back to back. We beat them four times in a row. Every single time. Villa fans, I don't know why. Like, genuinely, I don't know the signs behind it. But, uh, well, this might be the one time it doesn't happen. Murich beaten down already in five minutes. They're, they're not letting happen five times in a row. Let that be a lesson to you guys. Luton Town do not beat us five times in a row. It was going to end at some point. These guys are absolutely sick of us. Absolutely sick of a chance here. Look at the space. Where are you gone? Oh, got to capitalise on this. Connor. Adebayo. Bang. In off the post. And it's free in free for our new highest earner. Don't know what happened there. 
so much space down that right hand side for us. Connor Roberts was as free as a bird. Yeah, Villa are looking very narrow in this game. I mean, obscenely narrow for the way we got the goal. But I, I think if we draw them in, or continue to draw them in, there'll be tons of space down the flanks for us to exploit, really. With the, with the way they're set up in these games, we should get a lot of chances for our wing backs on overlaps, man. Connor down the right hand side once again with so much space to step inside. And it's that man again, and it's Cox for his first of the year. The short king, new number eight, with his first of the season. Once again, look at the space down the flanks, man. Connor and Ryan are going to have field days today. Quite literally, there'll be so much field for them to play into. Adebayo turns provider. Joel finds the gap. Luton turn on its head. Villa once again trail Luton. Deja vu. It's yours, Connor. Well done, mate. And Tashari gets on the deck, slows the tempo down. We're leading by one, but now it's long. Finds Cox. It's Joel for his second, for possibly the game, and for our fifth in a row. How? 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 I don't know. We've done it again. Five in a row. Fifth win in a row against Aston Villa. I'm sorry Villa fans. I don't I don't know what to tell you. Like genuinely I don't know how we keep doing this man. But you know the saving grace is that you're beating everyone else. You're a Champions League team this season but for <laughs> for your record against us, I don't know what to say. It's played five, won zero, drawn zero, lost five. This is ridiculous, man. Young Cocksmith bagging the brace as well. You love to see it. You know, I mentioned this last season, but it's so frustrating how, like, players, they, they can't get any, like, upgrades mid-season or post-season either because 72 rated, based on what this guy's doing in the Premier League, it makes no sense whatsoever. Absolutely no sense. But anyway, anyway, most important thing is performs on the pitch. So deadline day is here, 10 mil. And again, we've got three, three and a half mil. Yeah, about three and a half mil in the budget right now. And uh, I, I don't think we'll do anything. I'm liking how the team is looking, man. I'm liking it. I don't think we need to do anything on deadline day. I think perhaps there is a bit of a, a lack of depth here. But other than that, that's the only thing where I'm like, ooh, could be in a bit of trouble there. But you know what? What we could do is possibly bring in a shoulder shore tyre at Manchester United because he's, he's currently on the loan list there. So with very little money to work with in terms of transfer fees... We, uh, we, we we could get Shaw Tyre in on loan. He, he's, a, he's a good young talent, to be fair. And he wouldn't play much, but as a, as a backup playmaker, I think that would do a decent job for us. Well, this is the first time in the save I'm bringing someone in on loan. I want to do a 50-50 split if I can, and Ten Hag agrees to that as well. So Fulham want cash in, but I'm not prepared to cash out. Lol. And uh, there we go. You see it there. It's happened already before the clock hits six hours to go. Show the Shaw Tyre is in. And again, on a loan deal, only three and a half mil on the budget. That, that just makes sense to me. Squad player coming in, won't play too much, but at least it gives us a bit more depth now. Yeah, I like how the team is looking. We, we've rebuilt this really nicely. You know, losing Kilman hurt, obviously. You know, club record signing for last year. My player of the season too. Made a massive difference to our defence. But um, yeah, that, uh, that sale might have hurt, but it's... The Blades want Maitland now. He's only been with us for a year. I'd rather keep him personally as a, a good little handy squad player with the versatility. I think I think we're going to leave it there. You know, I'm liking how the team is looking, man. No need to, to splash the remainder of the cash. Save that for January for pre-contracts. I'm liking the team, man. I'm liking it as it is. And I think we'll leave it there. So the top deals in the window. Jude Bellingham. As a blockbuster move from Real Madrid to Manchester United. 181. 0.7 million pounds. My goodness, Sancho moving on from Bilbao to Arsenal for 97. And Bernardo Silva has gone from Man City to PSG and now to Bayern at 87 million. We can't splash that sort of cash around just yet, but I think with the limited budget we had once again and losing our club record signing, you look at how the team was looking for season three, it's looking very good indeed. Gabriel's come back from loan on that right-hand side. We've got a new DM duo, Jashari and uh, Dewsbury Hall as well. Malik's come in, new club record signing, replacing Kilman as well. But again, crucially, where we've improved is in depth. Galini, Mendes, Williams, Loda, all coming in to add good depth to our bench as well. I'm, I'm liking this, man. 
Really good progression heading into season three. And again, keeping it realistic too. And I'll do it for today's episode, guys. So big thank you for watching. If you have enjoyed it, then please do drop a like. Also in the comments, guys, rate this window out of 10. If you stayed all the way to the end of the video, rate this window out of 10. I want to see how many of you stay to the end, man. So, yeah, I'm, I'm giving it a 7.5, personally. It's not the greatest. It's not the one to write home about. But I'm giving it a 7.5. Solid 7.5. I thought we did really well in a tricky position again. Have a great day, guys. Much love. Don't forget to rate this round to window. And I will see you for the next episode of the EA FC Career Mode very soon.